Hello students, I am Talika Banerjee. Today I bring you a learning module in BSc Forensic Science on behalf of the content writers Dr. G. S. Sodi and myself on an important unit of forensic ballistics which is firearm evidence part 1. In this lecture we will discuss about bullets, its collection and packaging along with its examination. We will wind up this lecture with a discussion analysis of damaged bullets and a case study. So, let us start our lecture with a look at what we are going to learn today. First is introduction, next collection of bullets and test exhibits, bullet identification, examination of bullets, comparison of question bullet and sample bullet, analysis of damaged bullets case study and conclusion. The traditional bullet is made of soft metal with a rounded nose. The metal used is lead but varying amounts of antimony is added to it in order to provide the required level of hardness. This type of bullet is known as round nosed soft bullet and is commonly used in small arms whereas rifle bullets are arced and streamlined. However, there are some variations that is square nosed soft metal bullet known as wad cutter is used mainly for target shooting. Hollow point variety has a depression in the nose of the soft metal. This bullet is designed to mushroom or expand on impact. The bullets are covered with a jacket to overcome shedding of lead. There are two types of jacketed bullets. First is the full metal jacket bullets. They are those bullets which are covered with a strong jacket made up of steel, copper, nickel and zinc. This jacket covers the complete bullet except the base where soft metal interior is exposed. These types of bullets are made for military purposes. The second category is the semi jacketed bullets which are covered with comparatively thin jacket and the nose is partially or fully exposed. These types of bullets are mainly designed for creating mushrooming effect on impact. Mushrooming effect means it has a spreading effect when it strikes the human skin or the human body. Apart from these basic type of bullets, some more specific bullet types are first is dum dum bullets. These bullets were first developed in India in 1980s at dum dum arsenal. Dum dum is a place in Kolkata. They were earlier used in 1898 but had some defects. Since the base of the bullet was not jacketed there was a possibility that the core will blow and leave the jacket in the rifling of the barrel which may hinder the loading of next round or the subsequent round. The second type is the explosive bullets. These types of bullets are highly dangerous as they cause serious injuries to their victims. They can cause potential harm to surgeons or doctors as well who are conducting post-mortems as these bullets may explode while autopsy or may detonate during the diagnostic procedures such as ultrasonography. The third type of bullet is the frangible bullets. These bullets are made from compressed particles of paint and metal. These types of bullets are used as training bullets for aerial gunners by US Army. On impact with the object, these bullets disintegrate into dust like particles causing no damage to the object as such. The fourth type is the baton round. These are also known as rubber bullets. It is a riot control projectile. They were first developed in Hong Kong and were made from wood. But later these wood bullets were modified into rubber bullets. The fifth type of bullet is armor piercing bullet. This type of bullet is made for military purpose to pierce light steel armors. These are the body armors. The core of the bullet is made up of steel, 
and surrounded by a lead sleeve. Both the core and sleeve are covered under an outer jacket. On impact, the jacket and sleeve remain outside the armor, whereas the core pierces the armor. It is mainly used against light armored vehicles. Then the next type of bullet is the tracer bullet. These bullets leave a visible mark while in flight which helps in tracing the path of the bullet. They look like a ball but the real portion of the core is removed. The empty space is filled with a mixture of barium nitrate and powdered magnesium. Strontium nitrate is added to give it a red color. A flash of propellant ignites the chemical mixture. The mixture burns and shreds red spark during its flight. In a firearm, when the trigger is pressed, it releases the hammer or the striker with considerable force. Subsequently, the striker compresses a pressure sensitive material boxed inside the percussion cap. Percussion cap is placed on the head stamp portion of the cartridge. This generates a piercing flame which ignites the propellant producing gas in huge amount. Due to limited space in the cartridge, the large volume of gas produced develops very high pressure. This pressure developed is according to the range of 2 to 20 tons per square inch. The subsequent pressure forces the bullet or shot out of the muzzle end of the barrel, pushing it forward to move through the barrel. While the bullet moves forward, the cartridge case is pushed backwards. Therefore, it comes in contact with the firing pin and the breech face of the breech block and picks up marks at its surface. The cartridge which also expands all around due to the tremendous pressure developed in it comes in intimate contact with the chamber and may carry chamber marks also. The empty cartridge is extracted out of the chamber by an extractor and then ejected out of the gun or the firearm by an ejector. In this process, both extractor and then ejector are likely to leave marks on the cartridge case. All these marks are very useful enabling the identification of the bullet or the cartridge case with its equivalent or the specific type of firearm. If we are talking particularly about bullets, a bullet is either extracted from the body of a victim or recovered from the furniture, wall, floor or earth. It may also be found fallen at the scene that is the crime scene. The bullet is often damaged and unless carefully handled, the evidence on the bullet is destroyed in the extraction process only. The bullets that are recovered from dead bodies are extracted by medical officers or medical practitioners. They should establish the exact location of the bullet through x-rays. Extract the bullets with hands covered with rubber gloves. If a pair of forceps is to be used, its tip should be covered by plastic or rubber covers to avoid destruction or damage to the striations existing on the bullet. Avoid prying out a bullet from its seat if it is embedded in a bone. Cut the piece of bone containing the bullet if it is embedded in a bone. The bone is broken in such a way that the bullet is not damaged in the whole process of the recovery. Next, if we talk about the test exhibits, the test exhibits are prepared by the experts themselves. The investigating officers should not fire and send cartridge cases or bullets and the test patterns to the experts. The best test exhibits are obtained if the same arm and similar ammunition is used for the test purpose. Therefore, the recovered ammunition and arms should be sent to the laboratory only. Bullet 
fired through rifled firearms receives both the class as well as accidental characteristics of the barrel from which they are fired. These accidental characteristics are also termed as the individual characteristics. The bullet will show not only the primary marking left by the lands and grooves of the gun barrel, but will also reveal the fine striations in all the marks. These are the imprint of the small irregularities in the barrel and are never duplicated by different weapons. Means a specific firearm will create a specific type of striation marking only. If determination is to be carried out that whether the specific firearm has fired the question bullet, then a detailed comparison has to be made in relation with the markings present on question bullet to that of the test bullet from the suspected firearm. A bullet comparison microscope is used for this specific determination. The question bullet and the test fired bullet are illuminated obliquely that is at an angle in order to create shadows that reveal the ridges and furrows engraved by the firearm on that of the bullet. Next is comparison microscope in identification. Since the comparison microscope is probably the most important and most widely used scientific instrument in a modern crime laboratory, the first comparison microscope to be used in the field of criminology was a very crude instrument compared to highly developed instruments which are now available. It was designed by Albert S. Osborne for application in the field of document examination. A comparison microscope consists essentially of two compound microscopes having identical optical systems so that they give the same magnification connected by an optical bridge containing combination of prisms such that the viewing of two separate objects that is one under each microscope through a single eyepiece the two objects may be compared by bringing the images of parts of each subject into juxtaposition. The optical field seen through the single eyepiece is a circular area divided into two parts by a thin dark line. The object under the left hand microscope say the evidence bullet is seen in the left half of this optical field and the object under right hand microscope say a test bullet which has been test fired is seen on the right half of the field. A bullet is the projectile fired from a rifled weapon and is a part of a rifled cartridge. The bullet while passing through the barrel gets certain characteristics of the barrels which is a class characteristic mark of the barrel and the accidental characteristic marks or the individual characteristic marks. If we talk particularly about the class characteristics then number, width, depth, direction, angle and pitch of lands and grooves on a fired bullet indicate the class characteristics of a firearm and would be common on bullets fired from firearms of the same make and model but would be different in respect of different makes and models. Class characteristics are useful to the extent of quick eliminations only. If we now talk particularly about the individual characteristics or the accidental markings they are the finer details in the lands and grooves and they are the individual characteristics of the firearm. The individual features are helpful as they are always different and no two firearms have the same characteristics. These characteristics are really useful in comparison of bullets. Individual characteristics are the imprint of the small irregularities in the barrel and they are never duplicated by different weapons or firearms. While question bullet may be found at the scene of crime or removed by doctor from the dead body of the victim, 
the sample bullet or standard bullet is needed to be obtained from the recovered or the suspected weapon only. There are various methods for recovery of fired bullets and one of that is firing the bullet in a water tank and its recovery from the water tank itself. In India, most of the forensic organizations use bullet recovery box for recovering fired bullet or the standard bullet or the test fired bullet. Bullet recovery box is used in place of water tank because density of water is greater than that of the bullet and that's why may result in cracks or dents on the bullet and that's why water tank is not being used nowadays. After test firing has been done in bullet recovery box, the questioned or the crime scene sample is compared with the test sample under the comparison microscope. The striations present on both the samples are matched side by side. The striation markings present on both the samples if matches then it can be inferred that both the samples has been fired from same firearm only. When bullet seized at the crime scene is greatly damaged or when only fragments are recovered, comparative chemical analysis of the crime scene bullet and that of the test bullet by spectrographic analysis or elemental composition may yield useful information. The trial court seems to have overlooked the statement and confirmed itself to the less specific statement of a case regarding Ajit Singh given at the trial. The fact remains that at the earliest in the committal court, the appellant clearly alleged that Baldev Singh had been killed with a sua by the complaint party. This version was put to Dr. H. C. Gupta who had performed the autopsy of Baldev Singh in cross-examination even in the committal court. The doctor replied that he could not rule out the possibility of these injuries having been caused with a sua. This opinion was not discussed by the trial court. The learned judges of the high court also did not advert to it. Although in examination in chief role, the doctor had said that these injuries were likely to be caused by a firearm. Circumstances on record definitely pointed towards the conclusion that the injury was probably caused with a sharp pointed weapon and not with a gun or a firearm. The injuries were triangular. The dimensions as noted by the doctor were 3 by 4 inches into 1 by 2 inches into 3 by 4 inches on the front of the neck in the midline about 11 by 2 inches below the chin. Lacerated wound 1 inches multiplied by half inches into 1 by 3 inches on the back of the neck about 1 inches below the hairline. A gunshot wound of entry caused by a single pellet or ball is ordinarily circular or oval in shape. If these injuries resulted from a close range fire with shots striking en masse through the neck, there should have been the presence of scorching, blackening and tattooing in and around the entry wound. In addition to it, wadding and round cardboard pieces or pellets should also have been present outside or inside the wound. Nothing of this kind was found. Furthermore, the very story of Ajit Singh firing at Ishar Singh, but instead Singh was then interlocked in a struggle with Baldev Singh. In case that was correct, there should have been presence of some firearm injury on Isher Singh, but any such finding was not given by the doctor. The negative and the positive circumstances were a telltale. Taken into consideration the doctor's opinion presented during cross-examination, 
it was concluded that the injuries present on Baldev Singh were created by a sharp pointed weapon and not by gunshot by the complainant. Hence, there exists no uncertainty in saying that the learned judges of the High Court were in error in upholding the conviction of the appellants for the murder of Baldev Singh, merely on the basis of what they termed as plausible explanation rather than positive and convicting proof given by the prosecution. We would therefore set aside that conviction. For the purpose of comparison and individualization, striations present on the bullet found at the scene of crime are studied. For this reason, test firing is carried out with the suspected firearm in water tank or bullet recovery box. Usually, bullet recovery box is the preferred one for test firing. Striations of both the sample that is the question and the test sample is then compared with the help of a comparison microscope. 